Hi, this is Darren with the Mississippi State Chemical Laboratory, and today we're going to do a little bit of training on turbidity. Now, turbidity is a, an analysis that we don't do all that often, but it's a fairly easy one. It uh, uses this pretty simple instrument right here, and so it's a good place to start in the inorganics laboratory. This is our turbidimeter. It's a Hawk 2100AN turbidimeter and it measures turbidity for us. Now turbidity is just another word for murkiness so what we are looking for with this instrument is we're looking at water samples and basically seeing are they clear? Do they have um, lots of particles suspended in the, the water? Is it murky? Is it cloudy? And it can do this with a much greater degree of precision and accuracy than the human eye. Most of our, our supplies for our turbidimeter are kept in the drawer just underneath it. So we have everything that you need for it right down next to where the station is. Among the supplies that we have for this are our sample cells, which are glass or quartz vials that look like that. And then also our calibration cells. So these are sealed containers with various known levels of turbidity. So for instance, this is our less than 0.1 NTU solution. You can see it's pretty clear versus here is our 7500 NTU solution. It's very cloudy. It almost looks like milk. One thing to really keep in mind before you start doing this analysis is that this is an optical analysis. And so what that means is we're going to be shining light into and through our samples so uh, light is going to be coming into this cell and then we're going to be measuring the amount of light coming out of it. What that means in practical terms is that you want to avoid touching the sides of this cell as much as possible um, and especially you don't want to be touching it with ungloved hands because the oils in your hands will get on the sides of the glass and then that will interfere with the optical measurement that's happening in our analysis. To start up our turbidimeter, there's just a switch on the back, just a little bit behind where the paper comes out of the printer. You can flip that on and you can hear it uh, doing some mechanical things. I think that's the, the printer starting up. And you can see the logo showing up, the 2100 AN. It takes about a minute for this instrument to start up. So while we're waiting for that, we can go into what we're going to do once it does start up. A lot like basically every other analysis we do in this lab, we can't just get straight into it, put a sample into it and, and measure our turbidity. We're first going to have to do our calibration. And so that's where these guys come in. We're going to have to do our six point calibration starting with our lowest, our negative, or our less than 0.1 NTU solution and ending at, the, at our highest, our 7500. So when you see this show up on the little screen, the dashes in, and then NTU, that's how you know it is about ready to get started. Now it's measuring, it can, it's saying in the cell I'm seeing 0.061 NTU. So to calibrate we want to hit this calibrate button. You can see the LED switched from sample to calibrate. And then we're going to put our low standard in, again being careful not to touch the sides close our bay door, and calibrate. Now 
Now, each calibration takes one minute, so you can see the, the countdown timer on the little display. We'll probably speed this up in post-production. Okay, so it finished calibrating that first standard. Now you can see it's giving me the message 20.00 NTU. So that's what it's expecting. So I'm gonna take the less than 0.1 out, put that back in its case, and then I'm gonna put in this uh, 20 NTU standard. And actually when I took it out just now, it had some visible sort of chunks in it. So I gave it a little bit of an inversion, just shake it up and make sure that the suspended materials in there are all evenly distributed. So that's gonna go in the cell, close that and hit enter. Okay, it finished the 20, now it's going to the 200. So once again, we will carefully remove this, get it back in its case, get the 200 out. And actually, so I haven't shaken this one up and maybe you can see on the video, the larger particles in there that are floating around. So that's what I was trying to get rid of on the 20. So I'm going to just the same, give this one a few inversions, make sure it is well mixed and then put it in the cell and hit go. Okay, the 200 is done. So now we can take that out, put it back in its case, bring out our thousand, I can't actually see any larger particles in there, but I can't see a lot going on in there to begin with because that is getting to be a pretty cloudy mixture. So I'm gonna give that a few inversions and then set that to go. All right, our 1000 is done. Pull that out. Put this next one in. Again, a couple of inversions to make sure it's well mixed. This is our 4000 NTU standard. There we go. Okay, that was our 4000 done. Pull that out. Retrieve our 7500. Give it a couple of inversions, put it in our instrument, and hit go. Okay, that should be it for our calibration. Uh, so now we can remove this. We want to make sure we get our calibration standards back into their padded hard case, close that up and uh, get it back in the drawer for next time. So that calibration is fairly painless, I would say, pretty easy. Uh, doesn't take too long, all things considered, just six or seven minutes. Um, though you do sort of sit here and stare at a countdown timer for a lot of that time. So now we are ready to do our analysis and take some measurements. Um, before we do that, we are going to put our sample and a blank into some of these cells. Uh, you might be able to tell, uh, it may be a little difficult to read, but on these cells there are numbers 20849, and it's the same on both of them. What that means is that these are matched cells and so they should have similar if not identical optical properties so that we can accurately compare two different samples 
to each other with it, knowing that the glass itself is not going to interfere with that comparison. And so with these two cells, we're gonna have one for our blank, which is just gonna be our laboratory deionized water, and then the other one is going to be our sample. I've chosen just a, a random old sample. I think it was maybe runoff water. So you, you'll be able to see with the naked eye that it is a little bit cloudier, a little bit more turbid than our deionized water. But this instrument's going to be able to quantify that. One thing that you may notice when you take these cells out of their container is that there might be a little bit of dust um, or little smudges on the outside of the cell. If that's the case, you do not want to try and wipe it down with a chem wipe or a paper towel. Uh, those could potentially introduce very tiny uh, bits of debris and scratch the glass. And if we scratch the glass, that's going to interfere with the light passing through it. So with all of the equipment, we have this little microfiber uh, rag that we use to just sort of wipe out, wipe off the outsides of our cells. Make sure that they look clear. Nothing uh, that you can see with your own eye should really be standing out. So I have my two samples prepared. On the left is our blank. You can see it's pretty clear. On the right is our irrigation or runoff water. It's a little bit yellowy green and has some cloudiness to it. So we should see some difference in the, the measurements that we get here. So to measure, it's not that different from our calibration. We just want to go to sample mode. You can see the sample LED is on. The dashed line means it's thinking. Okay, and then now we need to place our, our cell in. You wanna make sure that that triangle near the top is pointing forward. So right down into there. Close it up and then measure. So we're getting a 0.051 NTU measurement. That was basically our low point on our calibration curve, right? less than 0.1. So very, very clear, not very turbid at all. You're going to want to take that measurement and write it down. This unit does have a built-in printer but I think it just doesn't get used enough. The heat activated paper doesn't work right. The printer doesn't feed well, so it's easier to just write it down. After that, you can pull that out and we can put our new, our measurement sample in. Again, making sure the triangle is pointing forward. Then wait a few seconds. And so we get a measurement of 22.5 NTU. So, you know, it wasn't nearly as cloudy as the, the high end of our calibration, that milky looking substance, but we can measure that high if we need to. This is still coming in much higher than our blank, which was less than 0.1. This is in the, the tens range, so 22.3 is probably what I would write down for that one. Once all of that's done, we can go and just shut the unit down using that same switch behind it. And we are done with the instrument itself. We do still have to worry about our measurement cells. So our blank cell was just filled with deionized water, which is what we were going to wash with anyway. So that one can basically just be emptied. The second cell, our measurement cell, we're going to need to rinse it with deionized water at least three times, and then we want to air dry it. 
you know, you don't want to get in there with a paper towel or anything for the same reason as before. You, you run the risk of scratching the glass and ruining your measurement cell. So a lot of times what happens is we'll run a measurement one day, rinse out the, all the glassware, leave it on the counter overnight, and then after it's air dried, put it away the next day. So I'd like to do a brief explanation of how the turbidimeter works. If all you wanted from this video was to learn how to use it, then you can safely click away now. But if you want to spend an extra couple minutes just understanding what it's doing, then keep watching. So I've explained that what it's, what it's doing is an optical technique. And what that means is we have our measurement cell and it is shining light through one side of it. We'll say it's coming in this way. If that liquid inside that cell is clear or mostly clear, then just about all of that light is going to travel straight through and come out the other side. However, if we have a cell that is more turbid, that means that there are, you know, tiny particles dissolved and suspended all in that solution. And so what's going to happen is you have your light coming in and some amount of that light is going to hit a particle and bounce off in another direction. Now, depending on the geometry of the particle, the angle of the incident light, you're going to get particles of light bouncing off in all sorts of different directions. And for the most part, the light's gonna pass through unless you have a completely opaque solution that you're working with. That said, what the instrument is doing is it has a detector sort of coming out this way. So for any light that hits a particle and bounces perpendicular to the angle of incidence of the light that was coming in, that's going to get captured by our detector in the instrument. And that's what it's really measuring is how much light is coming out at a right angle from the light that was going in. That way, it's not measuring any of the light that it's putting in if it goes through a completely clear solution. That itself is a function of how many particles are floating around in that solution. So if you have just a few of them, you're only going to get a few photons of light bouncing out and hitting the detector. But if you have a really murky solution, you know, all these different particles, then you're going to get a lot of light hitting those particles and bouncing off and hitting our de detector. That's about it. Like I said, it's a pretty simple analysis, fairly easy to understand, I would say. Um, I hope you learned something today and keep watching for more training videos.